ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start earlier. We, I believe we have a quorum. May all the board members please join us. Good afternoon. This is the February board meeting of the Miami-Dade Expressway Authority. I'd like to begin by welcoming a new board member, Mayor Carlos Jimenez. Welcome to the board. And would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, sir? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Secretary, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Board? Here. Commissioner Edmondson? Mayor Jimenez? Here. Ms. Gutierrez? Here. Mr. Meyer? Mr. Vasquez? Here. Mr. Walters? Here. Ms. Weinberg, Secretary Wolf, Here. Vice Chair Fano, Here. Chair Martinez. Here. We have a quorum, sir. Very good. Um, anyone wish to make any adjustments to the agenda? I will ask that the agenda be approved as is, and we begin now. Council, please. Declaration of voting conflicts. Do any members of this board have any conflicts with any items on the agenda? Seeing none, we move forward. Citizens' comments. Does anyone have any set of comments? Hearing none, council, we'll move on. We'll move on. Item two, approval of the summary minutes from the board meeting of January 31st, 2017. Moved by board member Gutierrez, seconded by Vice Chair Fano. Any discussion? Hearing none, discussion is closed. All in favor say aye. 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 Any objecting? Hearing none. Executive Director's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and if you don't mind, I will also cover the MPO representative report since we don't have a representative. That's fine. So I want to thank uh, Mayor Jimenez for giving us the time uh, to brief him yesterday. Uh, we had a good conversation on what we're doing and where we're heading. Uh, a few of the items that I wanted to report on, and I've asked uh, the Board Secretary to coordinate an intergovernmental meeting. There's a various bills that have been filed by the legislature that would affect MDX in, in certain ways. You got Senate Bill 308 by Frank Artilas that would transfer MDX to the Florida Turnpike Enterprise. You've got companion bills, House Bill 961 and Senate Bill 1282 by Representative Nunez and Senator Flores that request a 3% rebate to all electronic toll collection customers. So it's all of our customers. And that 20% of excess revenues be transferred to the county for transit projects. Uh, there's also a House Bill 1049 by Representative Avila and Representative Nunez called the Toll Reform Act. Many of the items are already in our policy, such as independent traffic and revenue studies for toll increases, uh, that MDX may increase our tolls for CPI, that toll increases have to be approved by two-thirds of vote of the board, that MDX may not use more than 10% of its revenue for administrative costs. We use 5% now, so we're getting a 5% bump on that. Uh, that we cannot put new gantries on any project constructed after July 1st that are closer than five miles apart. That pretty much affects all of our projects that we're moving forward with because five miles is a long distance. Our extensions are not that long. And then there's a number of, of items for information on our website, many of which exist, but there are two items that require us to rebuild our website and create a search engine so that they can search certain items on it. I've asked the board secretary to, to coordinate with the chair of the committee to have a committee meeting to discuss these bills and decide what positions we're gonna take, if any, in moving forward, because the session starts on Monday. Okay. I also wanted to report on our cash back program. Oh, before we get to that, um, I would like to request that a intergovernmental meeting be scheduled as quickly as possible. Mr. Vasquez, I know you chair that committee. So that see if, if we can arrange something with the secretary for sometime next week. We're looking at March 16th on the same day as the operations. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Committee meeting. Perfect. Thank you for being on top of that, Mr. Reskis. And I apologize for interrupting. No, no, please. Go on. Uh, on the cash rewards in the survey, as as I did last month to update you, we've got a total of 72,047 account holders who have registered, uh, totaling 118,000 transponders. Um, the majority of the members have been one click where they got the email and they were able to one click. 
What I really wanted to report on was the survey results. As, as everyone knows, we put out surveys uh, in an email with our newsletter, and we, we've received 39,725 responses to the survey. And like I said last, last month, uh, what the community of our drivers is looking for is a balanced transportation approach. They, they really want us to extend 836 out west and south. They want us to participate in public transportation infrastructure. They want us to extend the Grantney Parkway east and west. So the community that, that we've surveyed our users want a balanced uh, approach. As part of our Transportation Commission review, we also have to gauge the public, our commuters, on how they agree or disagree with the conditions of the facility. 94% of our users believe, greatly agree or agree that MDX manages and maintains its local expressways in an, uh, in an efficient, clean, and aesthetically pleasing condition. So that complies with our Transportation Commission uh, um, uh, performance measure. Uh, so to report on that. I also wanted to say this last month, uh, Juan Toledo presented, along with Secretary uh, Wolf, presented our work program to the National Association of Black Women in Construction. I only bring this up because the association recognized Helen Cordero for her efforts in the procurement uh, uh, arena and her advocacy for small and local business. I've included in your folders some data on small and local business. And I, we calculated the numbers for the last fis five fiscal years, although the raw data is there since fiscal year 2009. For the last five fiscal years, 35.5% of all the dollars paid out in in MDX construction or service contracts valued over $25,000 has gone to a small or local business. Uh, and that, and that's, that's a testament to Helen's hard work and outreach to the community and to invite them to participate with us. So the data's in your, in your folders. Uh, as far as the, the uh, MPO, uh, the report on the MPO, I, I attended the, the chairman, the Board of County Commission Chairman's Leadership Council uh, meeting two weeks ago. And part of that discussion had to do with transportation and transportation funding. There was a series of ideas that were presented, so I had to discuss the MDX component of it. At the MPO meeting, we had two items on the agenda. Both of them were amendments to the LRTP, the Long Range Transportation Plan. I apologize if I use uh, acronyms. I'll, I'll, the Long Range Transportation Plan. Both of the items were deferred from the MPO agenda and referred to the Fiscal Priorities Committee. The chairman of the MPO uh, wants us to present how we're gonna finance those projects and then do a general uh, continuing discussion on how we finance our entire work plan. So that is scheduled for March 2nd, this Thursday uh, morning. We'll present both of those projects and hopefully we will have it back into the MPO's uh, agenda for the March meeting, uh, board meeting. Both of these projects, so that the committee, know, for the board to know, are included in our five-year work plan. Uh, we were just trying to advance these two that came out of our strategic plan. Those are ramp access, 67th Avenue up in Miami Lakes, and the uh, 37th Avenue off of State Road 112, which would alleviate the uh, Iron Triangle, as we call it, the Lejeune 36th Street Okeechobee mess that's right here, just north of the airport. So we will, we will comply with the MPO and move forward. I also wanted to update the committee uh, on the MPO. The MPO this, this month adopted a new logo and a new name. The logo, I, I, it's, I'll share it with you, I'll email you a picture of it, but it represents all of the different modes and how we are more in a global approach of transportation. But I think the significance of it is that they changed their name to Miami-Dade Transportation Planning Organization. So now the MPO of Miami-Dade County is gonna be known as the Miami-Dade Transportation Planning Organization. It's more focused to what it is, to, to what the function is. Uh, Mr. Chair, with that, I'll conclude and I'll answer questions. Is anyone from the board? Mr. Walters. We, we spoke about the uh, first two pieces of legislation last month. The, the third one, the new one, um, it deals with the, the um, gantry cranes, how, uh, the gantries rather, how close they are. Does that one also only affect MDX or is that for all toll every, authorities in the state? Every bill that I mentioned specifically goes to the uh, Florida Expressway Authorities Act 348 Part 1 
and it's specific to any agency created in a home rule county, we're the only ones, Miami-Dade Expressway Authority. Well, so they only our, affect MDX. Are our gantries closer together than other toll we're, roads? We are an urban expressway system. So the distance between the Palmetto and the Turnpike is five miles, five and a half miles. So under the, the bill, we wouldn't be able to put a, a gantry. But what I'm asking you is, are, are our gantries unusually close together now, and that's why they need to be five miles apart? We have exits every uh, quarter section mile. Uh, yes, so they're different. Are there other toll authorities in the state similar? If you compare it to the Florida Turnpike, which has exits almost every two miles, and in some cases 40 miles, it's completely different. It's an urban expressway versus a turnpike system. We're very similar to the Orlando system. So what we're doing is really not unusual the way we... No. Okay. No. If I may... Mr. Raskin. What does that do for projects in the pipeline? Well, it's, we were calculating, you know, just, just looking at the extension of the Gratneys, east and west, which are less than five-mile extensions. If we can only put one gantry and we can't distribute the, the cost, then what ends up happening is that you would put one gantry You'd put a, a high price on that one gantry to finance the project, but you're artificially then diverting traffic off of the other mm -hmm. exits be, before or after, which would create a diversion of traffic. So that's why, you know, from my perspective, I always said le let the engineering piece to the engineers. I understand what the, what the concern is, and we're going to have a meeting with, uh, with Representative Avila very soon to have that conversation and see if we can modify that language. Any other questions? Any questions on this side? Hearing none. I do have one question, Mr. Rodriguez. You indicated that there were 39,000 respondents responses to the uh, survey, correct? Yes. Out of how many individuals that were asked to con participate in the, in the survey? It was 56,000, the, uh, the first wave of... Uh, so if my numbers are right, we got approximately around a 60, no, almost, a seven, almost an 80% response, about correct. 75% response. It was a very high percent response. An extraordinary yes. high per percentage, isn't that correct? Yes. Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask the, uh, the uh, executive director to do me a favor and see if he can get for me and for us, I guess, the... Um, the toll revenue from Sun Pass in Miami Dade County, we all of it, on all of the different not just us, everybody. Okay, okay. Uh, and then if you can break that up later when you get that as to well, how much is us? How much is MDX? How much is the Turnpike? How much is uh, Miami Dade? Because we have we have uh, some uh, some pass um, uh, bridges ourselves, and so I'd like to get a breakdown of what percentage of the tolls paid in Miami Dade County goes to who. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, moving on. The next matter is the treasurer's report. Since the we do no longer have general counsel, you skip general counsel again. I did it again. Two minutes in a row. Because you know, because this time you did MPO and uh, and your report simultaneously. General counsel. Personal. Thank you, Louis. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. Um, I have three matters to report on regarding litigation. Uh, the first one is ETCC. For the record, as I advised via email on February 15, 2017, MDX was granted a writ of prohibition from the Third District Court of Appeals, disqualifying the judge from making any further rulings on our case, on the MDX case. ETCC has 15 days from the 15th to ask for a rehearing, which would be Thursday, and then we would have 10 days to respond to their request. If the, if the DCA does not grant a rehearing, the case will be transferred back to the circuit court where we will be signed a new judge. Okay. Uh, Update on uh, MCM 1. As I advised last week, the 3rd District Court of Appeals affirmed the lower court's decision concerning attorney fees in the MCM versus MDX bid protest litigation. The day executive director, outside counsel, and myself are uh, currently reviewing for the possibility of asking for a rehearing. Lastly, um, a shade meeting request for eminent domain. This is the first time I've since I've been here that we've asked for a shade meeting concerning eminent domain. Obviously, it's a business. Uh, case, uh, damages case. Pursuant to, so I got to read this. Pursuant to Florida Statute 286.011, subsection 8, subsection A, an attorney for an agency needs to advise the board that they desire advice regarding pending litigation. Pursuant to the statute, I'm therefore announcing that I require advice regarding the case of Miami Dade Expressway Authority versus KB, KB uh, Investment Company. Oof. Uh, 
The meeting will take place during the next board meeting, which is scheduled for March 28, 2017. The individuals that can be present are the attorney for the agency, which is myself and Francine Stillman, a court reporter whose name has not been determined, outside counsel, outside counsel which will be Mitchell Bernstein of White Sirota, and Javier Rodriguez is the executive director, and all board members present for the meeting. And with that, I'm, I'm, complete, I'm done. Any questions to the general counsel? Hearing none, we'll do the treasurer's report. Ms. Schaefer, will you do the report today since we neither the treasurer nor the vice chair of the budget and finance committee is here today? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the treasurer's report is for a seven month period of fiscal 17. Um, our overall uh, revenue is about $4.7 million below what our forecast is. Um, majority of that is due to um, the hurricane back in October. On the expense side, nothing really eventful to speak of. Um, we still think that we'll have a savings in the, the operations section, about a million and a half by through the year end. Um, interest expense is about $300,000 below the forecast, and that's mainly due to the refunding that we completed back in September um, for series 2016. All, all in all, we're reporting net revenues about $60.7 million, or 2.9 <laughs> below what the forecast was. Um, even with the shortfall, we do feel that we would be able to meet our targeted coverage ratios by the end of June. Thank you, Ms. Schaefer. Any questions for the CFO? One Mr. question. Of course, Mr. Mayor. The dip in revenue, is it just totally to, for the hurricane, uh, the hurricane, the suspension, I guess, of, of tolls for a couple of days? Is that it? Um, the hurricane was about four and a half days. Okay. And is that it? Is that, what, is that where you saw the dip and that's it? There is a, you know, the total fee revenue is down about $2.7 million. Um, we do think that there will be a normalization of our toll revenue through the rest of the fiscal year. We'll make that up. That you'll make it up or that you will just stay at, at uh, over 2% below? I think we'll be back to, back to um, our, our forecasted about, about $19.5 million per month. Um, so we're back on track. I think investment income will exceed its projections, and I think that will make up um, some of the deficit as well as the expense um, savings as well. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Director, the committee reports can be infused into the general, into the general agenda, correct? Correct. So let's go to the regular agenda. Council, please. Sure. Uh, before we go on the regular agenda, I just want to put on the record that there is no consent agenda. Usually we have a consent agenda. All right. So we move to the regular agenda. Item A, MDX work program number 92404, State Road Extension West to the Homestead Extension of the Florida Turnpike. Approval of an interlocal agreement with Miami-Dade County, the City of Hialeah, and the City of Hialeah Gardens for the construction of Northwest 107th Street Avenue from 138th Street to 170th Street, endorsed by the Operations Committee on February 16, 2017. Anyone wish to move the item? Move the item. By the mayor, seconded by... Well, I don't trust really Miami-Dade County too much. <laughs> seconded by Ms. Gutierrez and Ms. Fano. It is now open for discussion. <laughs> Who is going to be presenting for staff? Um, Mr. Rodriguez. Juan Toledo. Mr. Toledo, please. Good afternoon, board members. The 92404 project uh, extends the State Road 924 to the west to the Homestead extension of the Turnpike. As part of our PD&E, we identified that we would need to do improvements to Northwest 7th Avenue and 138th Street to harmonize the construction along that area. The county uh, approached us uh, while we were in the PD&E to see if we can also include the extension of, or the construction of Northwest 7th between 138th Street and Northwest uh, 107th, 170th Street. So we worked. You, you mean to say 107th? 107th, 107th, 107th Avenue. 107th Avenue. Yeah. I'm sorry, 107th okay. Avenue between 138th Street and 170th Street. <laughs> this inner local agreement lays out the framework for the county to provide the funding for the construction of Northwest 7th Street as well as the framework for the City of Hialeah and City of Hialeah Gardens to provide the necessary right of way for the widening of a minimum five lane uh, facility between Northwest 38th Street. I'm sorry, North, yeah, between Northwest 38th Street and Northwest 107th Avenue. That's my summary. Does anyone from the board have any questions for Mr. Toledo? Mr. Mayor, please. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, uh, and I think it's in the agreement that, that we somehow work with the uh, Turnpike Authority on the, on the ex interchange on 170th and how that's all going to work. Yeah, that is outside of this interlocal, but yes, I understand that that is in the works as well. 
Okay. But it's outside of this inner local. All right. Any other questions from the board? Any other questions from the board? This matter was also very vetted during the operations committee, um, chaired by Ms. Gutierrez as well. All right, discussion being closed. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, item passes unanimous. Item B, Mr. General Counsel. Yeah, election, do you mind if I go to the podium? Right ahead. All right. Um, this is the election for the authority's treasurer for the remainder of fiscal year 2017. As we open this, por uh, this portion of the meeting to elect a treasurer for the board, if I may uh, uh, exercise a point of privilege. For the record, this election is being held as a result of Mr. Rodriguez Pena leaving the board. The newly elected treasurer will serve the balance of fiscal year 2017, which ends June 30th, 2017. Uh, I'll briefly review the customary procedures we follow for the elections for the benefit of our newest mayor, Mayor Jimenez. We have a four-part system, which is nominations, first part, second part is candidate statement and questions, third part is discussion, and finally we vote. I uh, will open the floor for nominations for the treasurer's position. You may nominate yourself or you may nominate someone else. There must be a second to a nominations. Members need not be present to be nominated or elected. Uh, the second part is the candidate statement and questions. After the nomination for treasurer position is closed, if a nominee chooses, they may make a statement or distribute a written statement to the members of the executive secretary for the record. Fellow board members may ask questions. Discussion, there will be a, an opportunity for members to comment on the various candidates, and when comments are concluded, the balloting for that office will commence. Uh, votes will be by written ballots. They, they have been provided in your folders. Are they providing it to, uh, like an orangey type color? I don't think there's any, is there some, I heard the phone, is there any members? Is there any members on the board uh, participating via telephone? I did hear somebody. Let me. Okay. As our procedure goes, if on the first ballot no nominee receives the majority of the votes, the member receiving the fewest number of votes will be dropped from the balloting, and the second round will be commenced. If there's only one nominee for the position, voting can be uh, completed by acclamation. Let me remind also that each member participating in this meeting is required to vote on matters before the board, and then any abstentions are not authorized by state law. Before I open nominations for the treasurer, are there any questions concerning the procedures I just outlined? Okay, seeing none, the floor is open for the nomination of treasurer for the governing board. All right, um, before we- Mr. Chair? If I may, before we begin the nominating process, and I see two people wish to nominate people, so I'll hold off. Under normal circumstances, we would normally consider strongly nominating the vice chair of the Budget and Finance Committee for the position to finish. However, because of the fact that Ms. Weinberg will be, because of attrition, unable to serve beyond next month, it seems illogical to go to that, uh, that port. So I will allow, Ms. Gutierrez, if you'd like, you can make a nomination at this time. I'd like to nominate Leonard Board for treasurer. You took the words out of my mouth. Excellent. So <laughs> second that, that nomination. Second. Awesome. The Two. nomination of Leonard Board for the treasurer has been made by Ms. Gutierrez, seconded by Ms. Fano. Any other member, excuse me, that's your job, not mine. <laughs> well, yeah, you're doing a good job. <laughs> Are there any further nominations for the Office of Treasurer? There's only one candidate. Uh, since there's no being no further nomination, I, I declare the nominations for Treasurer closed. Can I get a motion for? Motion. With a, acclamation? Motion, motion. For, motion for acclamation. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Mr. Congratulations. Mr. Board, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> By the way, Mr. Chair, we took an assumption that he was accepting. Yes, the, yes, I know. Uh, it was, it was, it was he was drafted. It, you know, we, we didn't even want to ask him, oh, so he was drafted. We forced you into this, but uh, thank you. I You're appreciate. Welcome. I appreciate the vote of confidence. I've only been on the board for a little about a year, um, and uh, it'll be uh, it'll be uh, an honor to interact with the professional staff that we have, and try to meet the challenges of what. Um, we need to do in terms of uh, developing uh, programs and finance programs to, to build everything that is out there in the master plan. So I thank every one of you for, for the vote of confidence and uh, hopefully uh, I'll meet the expectations you have set. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations, Mr. Leonard. Congratulations. Again. 
Informational items are in your packets if anyone wishes any questions on the items or do you have something to follow up? If I may. Sure. Uh, and, and I believe uh, Mr. Walters, Board Member Walters, I believe we adjusted the reports uh, according. We, we, we clarified some of the information that you had asked a couple of meetings ago. So the new report, all of the procurements, executed contracts, supplemental agreements, current solicitations are in the report. I also wanted to mention at the intergovernmental, we're also going to have a policy committee because we are in procurement right now for outside legal counsel for a pool, and that is assigned to the to the intergovernment to the policy committee. So we're going to figure out how, with a smaller uh, number of board members, we can adjust and maybe do a committee of a whole or so, and 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 run that procurement through committee before it comes to the board. So we're going to work with legal to to bring it to you, but the report's been adjusted, Mr. Uh, Walters, as you requested. Any questions? All right. Chair comments. <clears throat> Let me begin by congratulating AJ, board member A.J. Meyer. I've been informed that he, his wife gave birth to a beautiful baby yesterday. That is why he's not here for today's meeting. So if any of you have uh, board member Meyer's emails or texts, and congratulate him because that's specifically why he wasn't here today. And, I can tell you as a father of three little ones, that's Kennedy Autumn. Kennedy Autumn. So, wow. Kennedy Autumn. <laughs> Congratulations to AJ for, 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 for that name. Throughout my chairmanship as on the, um, for the MDX Board of Directors, I always talked about the fact that we needed a holistic approach to transportation, that we needed to have state, county, and volunteer community leaders work together to solve our problems. With the board's decision, uh, the county board's decision to appoint Mayor Carlos Jimenez and Vice Chair Commissioner Audrey Edmondson to this board, we now have on this board a combination of county elected leaders, Secretary Wolf from the state, and leaders from the community such as Vice Chair Fano, Board Member Vasquez, Board Member Walters, Board Member Gutierrez, and the newly elected uh, Treasurer Board and myself working together for the future of Miami-Dade County's transportation. One of the things that is most important is it's been an apt thing I've strongly advocated so as a sport is that we make sure our dollars that are collected here in Miami-Dade County stay in Miami-Dade County to work on our needs for transportation. And that is something we've been dedicated to and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to continue to work on that. Some of you may not know this, but one of the I believe one of his favorite chores, Mayor Jimenez, is to drop off your grandchildren at school. I know this because my daughter and one of his grandchildren were in the same pre-K three class together. And we would run into each other, especially when I was running late, dropping off the kids. And on the way out, we would talk about sports. You see the Dolphins and how bad they were playing. He had to put up with me talking about the Cubs incessantly all throughout the fall and trying to get there and talk about this community. And one thing I learned greatly about Mr. Mayor is that you truly love Miami-Dade County and that you have always dedicated yourself to that and to your family. And I am extremely excited in this historical opportunity for you to be part of this board and to work with us together to try to solve our problems because we all live here and we all need to work together. And it's extremely customarily for new board members to have the opportunity to say a few words. And Mr. Mayor, I invite you at this time. First, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the board and for you to have the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, and it's uh, a pleasure to, uh, to uh, have conversations with you uh, when we drop off our grandchildren. And now we won't be able to talk about the MDX anymore. I know. Uh, <laughs> we still but, talk uh, but, um I think that the, uh, what the commission did uh, in putting myself and, and the vice chair is, is a clear indication that, that we consider MDX to be part of the solution and that we need to work together uh, because it's about mobility. It's really about getting around. Uh, MDX is about maybe expressways. Maybe we should be more than that. Um, Miami-Dade County, uh, what we do is about roads and public transit. Um, and we need to join forces because we're here to work for the, for the people of Miami-Dade. And so I, I look forward to working here with you uh, in my capacity as a board you know, member, but I also look forward to working with MDX as my capacity as mayor of Miami-Dade County. And, uh, and as such, um, 
you know, I think you have a, uh, a, a very good board, and I know you have a terrific executive director, somebody who, frankly, I've tried to steal from you uh, more than one occasion. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. We've tried, and, we, we've and tried, we've tried to stop that. I know. You've been very, <laughs> really, really hard in, in keeping him. Now I won't have to steal him anymore. That's why I joined here, so I won't have to steal him anymore. <laughs> um, and so it's, uh, if, you can't, if you can't beat him, join him, I guess. So here we are. Um, <laughs> But one of the things that I do want to know, uh, from, I want MDX to look at, and also the same in conjunction with Miami-Dade County, is the future. And we are on the cusp of some extraordinary things. And so I'm asking, I would ask, what I would ask is that the executive director kind of brief us on the future, all right? I've been trying to brief our, our directors on the future of transportation, uh, what that entails, and it could be significantly different than what transportation is today. And I'm not talking significantly different in 2050. I'm talking significantly different in 2022. Mm -hmm. All right. And so uh, I believe this expressway authority has uh, a unique opportunity to look at the future and position Miami-Dade County for that future. Uh, and there will be a lot of different modes of transportation. But how we get around in the very near future is going to be quite different than how we get around today. And we need to be prepared for that. I'm also here to make sure that, that uh, as an elected official, um, and really one of the few countywide elected officials, that I represent the people. And so uh, I'm a very fiscal conservative. I, uh, we, we will spend what we need to spend. That does not mean that, that I am anti-investment. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's vital to the future of Miami-Dade County that our mobility problems be resolved because mobility also leads to economic development. Economic development leads to jobs. Jobs lead to a better quality of life. And so it's all circular. It's all interrelated. Uh, and, and part of the big problems that we have, whenever I, I'm trying to bring somebody down, a company, et cetera, they talk about two things. They talk about education. Mm -hmm. And our educational you know, system here, uh, frankly, has improved you know, quite a lot in the last 10, 15 years. And the second thing, inevitably, inevitably, they talk about is transportation. And so while we're not the worst, um, you know, that's not saying much. We're not the worst. I mean, I've seen you know, uh, cities where we're actually mu much more congested than we are. Uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, that we want to aspire to be the worst. <laughs> we want to aspire to be the best. We want to uh, improve our quality of life. There are people down in South Dade that today take over two and a half hours to get to their work. To two and a half hours to get back. It's five hours a day uh, that they could be doing, you know, uh, a lot of other things. And really, that trip should be taking, if we, there weren't congestion, could be taking half an hour, 45 minutes. And so that's what uh, that's what we need to do. We need to we need to um, we need to focus on time and how do we save people time, all right? And uh, and by saving time, then we improve their quality of life. By saving time, we reduce their expense terms of maintenance, gas, et cetera. Uh, and, then, and at the end, uh, we, should, we should do and make, and make the improvements that we need to and charge them exactly what, it, what we need in order to, to make that happen, OK? And so uh, I look forward to my time here. Uh, and, uh, and I look forward to the next four years. I think they're going to be really exciting mm -hmm. uh, in terms of transportation, because I think we are on the cusp of some major, major changes. And so I'd love to as uh, my first, one of my first assignments, if I could, for, to the executive director is to give us a glimpse into the future, what he thinks the future holds for transportation here in Miami-Dade County, and what's our role in it, and how do we cooperate with, uh, with the state, county, the feds, and us to make, uh, make Miami-Dade County better. OK, thank you. I th no, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Executive Director, can you give us an, informa an informational item on those issues for next time? Sure. The I'm other delighted. thing. The, the other matter we're going to need to discuss is I'm going to re suggest for staff to start reviewing our policies based upon the fact that we are going to be a smaller board, so we're going to, we may need to combine some of our subcommittees um, because we're going to go from a 13-member board to a nine-member board. So I'd like some information on that for our next meeting in, in March. Mr. Mayor, I agree 100% with you. Uh, MDX has always been there willing to... And, willing to work with other members of this community in any way, shape, or form. As you and I were both there when we did the park and ride a couple weeks ago, when we were there also with representatives of the state. So this is nothing new, but having you here will absolutely increase that. And I couldn't agree with you more. We got to look forward, not backwards. 
we have to determine that what might have been brilliant type of technology today may not be of any value five years from now, and we need to make sure we are ahead of the curve, which, by the way, MDX has always has been in many ways. And as you look at some of our successes, that's one of the things that we should be, I am personally very proud of. Vice Chair Edmondson has also joined the board. She is not here today. I will formally welcome her at the next board meeting. I want her to be present for that as well, so I look forward to her being part of this as well. And again, I welcome you, and I congratulate uh, Mr. Board for his appointment to the treasurer. At the next board meeting, we will be honoring members of the board that, were, uh, that have since left us, so I look forward to doing that at the next board meeting as well. Um, hearing nothing else, most to it. Yes, Mr. Vasquez. Quick question before we adjourn. I don't know if I missed it during the uh, MPO report, um, but I wanted to know a little bit more about the Gratney and 67th Avenue project that I know was deferred. Yes. And what were, that does to the time frame. It, it doesn't do anything to the time frame because we were, what we were asking for was to amend the LRTP to make it a priority one. We've already included it into our work plan. Right. Our work plan gets adopted by the MPO prior to the end of this fiscal year, I believe the MPO will take a vote. We just wanted to advance it. So in essence, it's a 30-day delay. As far as we know, are Hialeah and Miami Lakes on the same page for the They're project? on the same page. It's just an issue of explaining to the, to the MPO members of that committee how we're financing those projects. That's the request that was made by, by the committee. Other announcements, we have the operations meeting on March 16th at 10.30 a.m. We will also be having an intergovernmental meeting that day as well possibly before or after that time will be posted. And our next board meeting is on March 28, 2017. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, means adjourn. Thank you all. <laughs>